I recently came across this website, craft.do, and I really love their landing page. So if you refresh, you can see how this text here comes in, animated, blood, and all the stuff. Well, I decided to try it out, and this is the result I have here. So if you refresh, you have similar effects. I'm going to be showing you how I achieved this with just HTML and CSS. So I'm going to be starting from this. I just have the heading, the paragraph and the button. And this is the HTML for it here. I have H1. In this H1, I have four spans. So each of the span has each word. So where ideas meet action. And we're going to come to that in a second. And I have this P with a class of fade up. And I have this button with a class of fade up. In this button, I have this text and this SVG. I got this SVG from Remix Icon, which is an open source icon library. Now let's go to our style of css i have some basic styles here so this is for the landing this is for the h1 this is for the p and this is for the button for the button i'm using the linear gradient so you can notice a bit of the gradient so first thing let's start from the headings so you notice how each word in the heading blows in well let's do that and for this i'm going to have h1 span then here I have opacity of zero, position of relative. Then I'm going to have animation and the name of my animation is going to be blur. This should last for 500 milliseconds and it should stop at the last keyframe. And then here I'm going to have my animation delay and here I'm going to use a custom property called animation delay. Now for this custom property, this is going to come from each of the spans. So for the first span, I'm going to do H1 span end of type one and this is going to have an animation delay of 10 milliseconds then i'm going to repeat this for the remaining spans so for the second span this should have an animation delay of 200 milliseconds this should have 400 milliseconds and this should have 600 milliseconds and now i can create the keyframes for blur so keyframes with an identifier of blur at zero percent we're going to have a filter with the blur of 40 pixels who we'll have an opacity of zero and would have a bottom of minus 40 pixels and then at 100 percent it's going to have filter with the blur of zero pixels opacity of one and a bottom of zero this should be end of type three and end of type four by the way for the bottom property here to work i need to have a position of relative if i have a default position of static the bottom doesn't work but when i have position of relative then you can see the text coming from the bottom and then we have the opacity and the blur effect i have a video where i simplify the different positions in css i'll leave a link below so you can check it out let's create something for the fade up so the p has a fade up and the button has a fade up class well let's come here and create some animations for fade up so here in fade up we have a position of relative then here i'm going to have an animation i'll call that animation fade up and this should last for 700 milliseconds and it should stop on the last keyframe and i'm also going to add an ease out you can also add ease out to this blur just so it's smoother if you want and then for the animation keyframes, I'll call this fade up. At 0%, we're going to have opacity of 0 and a bottom of minus 60 pixels. And then at 60%, we're going to have an opacity of 0.7 and bottom of 4 pixels. And then at 100%, we're going to have an opacity of 1 and a bottom of 0. This 60% keyframe that we have is to create a bit of a bouncing effect so that it kind of goes up then comes down i can make this obvious by making the bottom 20 pixels so now you see how the button goes up before it comes down but i want the bounce effect to be subtle so i'm just going to keep this at four pixels so now we have this but then i don't want the paragraph and the button to come in at the same time because currently they are coming at the same time so i'm going to use another animation delay custom property so i'm going to say animation delay then i have the custom animation delay and this animation delay is going to be coming from the p and from the button so for the p i'm going to have my animation delay 
as 500 milliseconds and for the button i'm going to have the animation delay as 600 milliseconds now the reason why i'm using 500 milliseconds is if you remember for the span animation this lasts for 500 milliseconds so the idea is that at the point where the spans are completely animated in just before they are completed that is when the paragraph can come in because currently what we have is that all the animations are happening at once but i want this to happen first and then this comes along and then this comes along i also need to put an opacity of zero here because since there's going to be a bit of delay then i don't want the text showing if i don't have the opacity of zero this is what we have you can see this is showing before the animation takes place but i want to keep this at opacity of zero I can also keep this as a default of 60 pix pixels so that while we have our animation delay then the paragraph and the button comes in and now we have this so as the blur is about completing the paragraph comes in and 100 milliseconds later the button comes in if I should make the button have an animation delay of let's say 1000 milliseconds you're going to notice that the button comes in later but I want to keep it at 600 milliseconds and now we have this by the way, I'm also going to leave a link below so you can learn the difference between end of type and end of child if you're probably wondering why I'm not using end of child. Now we're almost there, but one more thing I want to do in this demo is the glow effect. So if you come back to the demo, you can see when we refresh, the button has that glow from left to right. Let me do it again. You see it happens from left to right. For this, I'm going to use the before and after pseudo elements. I have a video on the before and after pseudo elements. I'll also leave a link in the video description if you want to check it out. So for the before, I'm going to have my empty content position absolute width of 20 pixels left of zero pixels i'm going to show you what this actually looks like height of 120 percent so that it's bigger than the button for the background color i'm just going to put this faded white background here I'm going to have a transform with a skew of minus 20 degrees then i'm going to have a filter with a blur of 10 pixels actually before i show you the blur let me show you what the before pseudo element looks like i'm also going to turn off these animations for now and for the fade up i'm going to remove this opacity of zero all right so this is the button and you can see the before pseudo element here so if i should make this a brighter or a higher opacity you can see this here but i want to keep this back to what it was before so this is the before pseudo element here and i'm going to repeat the same idea for the after pseudo element so for the after i'm going to keep the width as 100 pixels and i'm going to make this a bit brighter so i'm going to keep this at 0 0.15 and if i should save it this is what the after looks like so we have the before and we have the after by the way this is just me trying to hack my way around getting a glow effect you can use some of other approaches so now i'm going to put my filter blur of 10 pixels actually i'm going to keep this one at 13 pixels and then for the before i'm going to keep the blur at 10 pixels well now you can see we have this blur at the left here let me take this to 0 0.05 Five. So we have the before and after pseudo elements blurred here, but you really don't notice it until we put some animations. So for the before pseudo element and the after pseudo element, I'm going to have an animation. I'm going to call this slide glow. This should happen for 1.5 seconds and this should stop at the last keyframe. Then I'm going to have an animation delay of 1100 milliseconds if you're wondering why i'm using 1100 milliseconds it's because the button animation already delays for 600 milliseconds and the animation on the fade up happens for 700 milliseconds so 600 plus 700 is 1300 milliseconds so i'm keeping this at 1100 milliseconds so that at the point where the button finishes its animation then we have that glow from left to right but then i'm also going to come here and the left for this is going to be minus 100 pixels so that it is out of the button this is also going to be left of minus 100 pixels so that is out of the button and if i should refresh you will not see the glow here because the glow is somewhere around here but then for the animation i'm now going to have my keyframes called this slide glow and at zero percent we're going to have a transform with a skew of minus 20 degrees and it translates x minus 100 pixels and at 100 percent i'm going to have my transform still keeping my skew at minus 20 degrees then i have my translates 
x to be 600 pixels so that it translates out of the button and now if i should save this you can see the glow happening from left to right so if i should refresh you can see it comes from here to this point. You can make your glow have more opacity if you want it more obvious. And now that we have that, I can put back the animation for the fade up and the opacity of zero. And I can go to the spans and also set the animation blur. So if I should refresh, you can see the heading blurs in, this animates in, and then you can notice how the button also has that glow from left to right. Similar to what we have here. Of course, there are more things in this website that I like and I'm going to be experimenting with. But I hope that with this demo, you have learned a few CSS tips that you can apply to your own project depending on what you're trying to build. I'm also going to leave a link to the code pen of this demo in the video description so you can check out the code if you want to. If you enjoyed this demo, please give it a like and share with others and also subscribe for more CSS demos like this.